Hello and welcome to an episode of Atomic Vinyl Reviews. My name is Jacob and today we are doing a figure comparison or a figure war or a figure shootout, whatever you want to call it, between the NECA Godzilla 1954 figure, as seen here, and the SH Monster Arts Godzilla 1954 figure, as seen here. Now these are both articulated, approximately 6 inch scale representations of the Godzilla from the original Godzilla movie, Godzilla 1954, Gojira, or the 1956 American cut, if you prefer Godzilla King of the Monsters. First of all, I want to cover why I am doing this figure comparison, because this is a video that I have been meaning to do for a very long time, and one that I probably should have done much closer to the release of these figures. Very, very recently, I saw posts showing up on Facebook, because I follow a lot of the Godzilla fan groups on Facebook, of people discussing which of these two figures is better. People are always discussing, like, whether the NECA version or the Monster Arts version is better, because, you know, that's just what people like to do. These are the two main sort of articulated Godzilla lines. Now, the reason I decided to make this video in particular is because now... And back in the day when I saw people talking about these two figures, there was this idea that they kept bringing up that I have just no idea why people think this. It really baffles me to the core. And that idea is summed up that the NECA version is far more suit accurate, whereas the Monster Arts version is far more stylized and is meant to look more like real creature I guess I yeah I don't know either I completely I have no idea every time I see this post I question the person commenting that I'm just like really do you honestly believe that because I I see the exact opposite when I see these two figures and so figured this would be a really good video to discuss that and generally cover my thoughts about these two figures because these are, you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the original 1954 Godzilla design and these are two very prominent figures of that design and I would really love to talk about them. First I want to cover some background on the NECA figure here. I think this figure in particular is when NECA actually started to take the Godzilla line a bit more seriously. Before this we did have the Godzilla 2014 figures from NECA, which were really well done. Uh, Sculpt-wise, and just the general build of them, they were really well done. Especially that really massive, massive, uh, almost 30 centimeter tall uh, version of Godzilla 2014 that they put out. Sadly, they never actually made any other Godzilla figures in that scale. They started off really strong with those 2014 figures. However, Afterwards, they started to put out some figures based on Godzilla suits, and you could tell that they weren't putting their best sculptors on this line. I kept joking in my reviews of those figures, saying that like they put some intern um, on the job to try and sculpt those things. So initially, we had like the 1994 Godzilla. Uh, that one looked good from the distance, but the moment you looked at it closely, the face was really off, the scaling was really lazily done, it just looked derpy and weird, and I was never a fan of that figure. Then we got the mess, which was a 1984 Godzilla figure from them, and they've since tweaked it a little bit, but it was just... I don't know, I'm not even going to talk about that figure anymore, because I, I, I think it's grossly... Ugh. It was a mess. They, they were even originally going to put this even worse head on it, but then people complained after they saw the prototype images. And it seemed that NECA really weren't putting any effort into their Godzilla line until this sculpt. So prototype images were released of this guy here, unpainted of course, and like really simple looking. And I freaking love this thing because this is the first one that actually had some decent sculpting to him. Now that said, this guy is still extremely stylized compared to what the actual Godzilla in that movie looked like. This guy has a much shorter tail, for example, as you can see here, really short tail. This is back when NECA's Godzilla figures still used the bendy wire. Their last couple of figures, they actually 
really up their game and they actually added a lot of segments in the tale similar to how monster arts have done their tales which was a real real step up for NECA but this was still one of the last ones that still had the little bendy wire and his tail's way too short uh, spines on this thing way too thin way too small really badly painted I'm just gonna be honest not very not very well well done and then we get to the body the body of this guy's actually done pretty well it isn't accurate to the film and now this is where I really clash with a lot of people that have been making those comments. People say that because this guy has all these like wrinkles in him, it really captures the look of the suit used in the film. While I can agree that I really love the the use of these sort of wrinkles in here and they really do sort of capture the vibe of like a man in a rubber suit kind of thing and that I love that they added that detail because that's something only really the best Godzilla figures really do capture such as X plus and also monster arts figures for example so you can see this figure definitely does have those wrinkles all around the suit however the thing is this one here is much more how would I put it cartoony it's a it's a more caricaturized stylized version of that where these wrinkles really aren't done in the same way that this particular suit was done not to mention the proportions of this thing are still very off. The arms are too big. While I love how big and chunky the legs are and how big the feet are, that's also not really very accurate to how it was in the film. And the head is too big and the teeth, I have some issues with them. And it's just, there's just a bunch of little things about this guy which add up and make this guy really not as screen accurate as a lot of people say he is. I really don't get it because... When you compare this guy, which, don't get me wrong, I love this figure. This thing has so much personality. He's really well built. He's, you know, nice, solid material. Sculpting is on point. They actually did a great job with the scales, because pre previous NECA Godzilla figures, they had pretty lazy sculpt work on the scales. Uh, the proportions on him, again, very off, but then he's got a lot of... Um, you know, personality to him, really love that. And he does represent this design fairly well, like you can tell what they were going for with this thing. This one on the other hand, the Monster Arts, is sculpted by master sculptor Yuji Sakai. If you guys don't know who he is, then I don't, I don't even know why you're watching my channel. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's known for doing resin kits, X-Plus figures, and a lot of sculpts in the Monster Arts line. He's a very prolific sculptor. Uh, also does the Ichiban Presto uh, line of figures of Godzilla. And he captured the likeness of this Godzilla almost perfectly with this figure. The proportions on this thing are absolutely perfect down to almost every last detail the scaling on this thing is incredibly accurate to what he looked like in the film you can see when we put both these figures side by side so this one unfortunately is a little bit shorter than the NECA but that's really common when you're comparing NECA Godzilla figures and Monster Arts ones we can see the tails much bigger on the Monster Arts here much more in proportion it's even bigger uh, especially considering this guy's actually shorter than the this guy here. He's got bigger spines on his back. These spines are sculpted perfectly. These are very, very screen accurate spines. Uh, very, very well done. Great attention to detail. Even all the folds in the skin of this thing, they are accurate to how the suit looked. The actual suit in the movie. I do want to clear up that the people who in the comments that I'm kind of countering with at least some of the ones I responses from they weren't actually saying that the NECA figure looks more like a guy in a rubber suit than the Monster Arts one they were saying that this figure this specific figure looks like the specific suit used in the 1954 movie not a suit compared to this one which I I'm so baffled by because if you actually look at the suit itself in the movie now they I think they used two suits uh, one of them was cut in half and used for certain shots uh, which is the original suit because it was way too stiff for the actor to move it so they had to make a second one 
and that second one is the full bodied one so there's going to be slight variations with details but overall both of those suits pretty much looked almost identical to this figure down to especially the proportions like I keep saying the texture of the scale work on this thing or the skin really really specifically done like this and the nature of the creases in the suit for example the most notable ones on this figure the monster arts are in his legs here and you can definitely see that in the film that's very accurate to how they were in the film whereas these ones here look a lot more loose and floppy whereas the suit itself used in the film was actually made of a very rigid material it wasn't quite prone to having these really loose creases like you'd expect for, from a more cloth or soft rubber like suit which is what this kind of look is more imitating and again it's stylized for all intents and purposes so I'm again super baffled but personally I'd say when it comes to sculpt when we're comparing these two figures the Monster Arts absolutely wins in this category. In fact, it's one of the best sculpts of the 54 design out there in figure form, at least from red readily available figures. The only other one that I've seen that really surpasses this one would probably also be another Yuji Sakai sculpt, and that is the X Plus Yuji Sakai Modeling Collection 30 centimeter scale Godzilla 1954 figure which is one of my all-time favorite looking figures. It's my holy grail figure at the moment, and for the life of me, I can't find it anywhere on the internet. I think it came out like three years ago or uh, something like that, maybe maybe 2017 or something like that, But and then it just disappeared from the internet entirely, and I can't even find like an overpriced one anywhere online to buy, and it's just... Yeah, it's a real bummer. So if anyone actually is is uh, willing to part with one of those or knows where I can get one of those for sale, uh, please let me know because I really, really want one of those. Uh, I will sell an arm or a leg for one of those because uh, I'm really picky when it comes to my uh, 1954 figures. I want them to be really spot on and just really capture that vibe because it's one of my favorite Godzilla suits. In fact, I'd argue that even the 30cm X Plus figure, the normal one, not the Yuji Sakai one, is actually quite inaccurate. And I actually, actually do have it here. I don't know if I can fit it on screen without uh, messing with too much, but you can, you can make it out here. Even this one, I'm not 100% uh, sold with it. I think it does have some issues. The face is a bit off. Uh, the spines aren't quite perfect on it and, and some stuff. And it looks a bit more, a bit more rigid and not quite as elegantly done again as as even the monster arts or or that other Yuji, Yuji Sakai sculpt. I also want to make it clear that in this video I'm not arguing that uh, you have to prefer the monster arts. There's a very very good reason for preferring the NECA figure and that is of course the price. Now I'm not 100% familiar with how much this one currently goes for because I know NECA figures are slowly going up in price now since they have been discontinued for the most part. Uh, this one in particular, the 1954 variant, the boxed version, later on the NECA Godzilla line started releasing their figures in beautifully, beautifully designed boxes of really cool poster art. Uh, that version is really rare and really hard to get so I'm still on the lookout for one of those but I doubt I'll ever get one in my collection because I'm not willing to pay a couple of hundred dollars or way over a hundred dollars for a NECA figure of, of this guy even if it does come with that really beautiful box. That said price wise this one initially uh, would have and probably still is your best bet if you're just you know casually after a 54 for your collection. However, I believe that the 54 is a really special suit, at least to me. Uh, it really defined Godzilla's image for the rest of the series. So I really am always on the lookout for a really, really well done 54 figure. And that's why I think this one is worth it, despite the, you know, the general price. But then again, I'm a person who quite pr uh, prolifically collects all Monster Arts figures. So take my... Uh, my thoughts about it with a grain of salt if you're not really 
uh, into spending Monstrat's prices on figures to begin with. That's just kind of my preference. Another thing that I'd say the NECA figure actually does really well, not for the most part, but in some parts, is they actually painted the nails on the figure quite well. Uh, the Monster Arts, they completely omitted painting the fingernails here, uh, the claws on his hands. I don't know why. It's bizarre to me. Uh, they did an okay job on the toenails, it's just kind of airbrushed grey. That works well enough. The spikes, I think, are done pretty well on the Monster Arts. Again, they're sort of loosely airbrushed. It's not very precisely done, but it does really capture what he looked like in the film, nonetheless. Whereas the NECA figure, uh, I don't know. They tried. I'm not really a fan of these spines. They're just way too thin, small, and flimsy. Uh, they really started to do their spines a lot better with their newer figures, and I wish they would have been able to re-release a version of this guy which was tweaked with a improved tail and improved spines. I think that would have been amazing. Nonetheless, it is what it is. Another thing is, the pupils on this guy are a little bit off on the NECA figure. They're face forwards too much, I'd say. Now, the Godzilla from the movie did have his eyes facing forwards in some scenes, but generally they're kind of more facing out to the side like they are on the Monster Arts figure. Have we, even on the Monster Arts figure, I think the pupils are a little bit off. They might be just slightly too big, or the eyes in general might be slightly too big. It's really hard to tell. They, they probably aren't that much but something about them is ever so min minorly off. And from certain angles, like from the side, I have some minor issues with the face on the Monster Arts figure. I uh, actually have more issues with the face on this guy, but since this guy, again, I think of this one as completely stylized, it, it's, you know. But on the 54, I think just to make it a little bit more perfect, I think the very tip of the snout here is a little bit too pointed here. I think if they made it a little bit more broad shaped with the, the nose maybe coming up a bit forward, a bit more flat on the side, and something about that lower jaw is just a bit off. And this is actually something that I have an issue with on both figures. So if you open up the mouth on both figures, they both look a little derpy, especially from the side. Now, I think they look even more derpy in person than they actually are coming out on camera right now. But the issue I have mainly with them is that they have a bit of a, an underbite. Their jaw, when you open them, for whatever reason, it articulates at a point where it seems to extend the lower jaw a bit further than it should be when you open it. And it just kind of looks really odd. It's less of an issue on the Monster Arts, but it is still there, which is a shame because for the most part, Monster Arts figures don't really have this issue. I, there's a few out there, like the uh, 74 Mecha Godzilla from them, which does also have this issue, uh, this figure, and there's probably one or two other ones. But generally, Monster Arts works really hard to articulate their jaws, where at the very least, they have a bit more of an overbite than an underbite when they open them. There you go, when you even close the jaw, it looks a little bit odd from the side there. And I think that's less of a sculpt issue and more, again, just the way that they had to cut up the articulation and make it all function. Didn't quite go in the figure's favor. It's a very minor thing on the Monster Arts, but on the NECA figure in particular, it's quite ungodly. Like, you could take away about this much of the jaw here, and that's probably what it should look like, to look a bit more natural. However... It is extended quite a bit longer, and also the jaw, the general shape of it feels a little off for the 54 design. I think there's something a bit off with the teeth at the front here. The rest of these teeth are a bit too prominent, whereas the only real teeth that you should notice are the, the two fangs on the top here. So when we actually look at images of the 54 design, those are the more prominent teeth. Whereas you've got these... These really, really prominent teeth kind of peeking through at the front when he got his mouth closed like that. And that that's quite distracting and really takes away from the overall look of the character. Overall, I think the head sculpt on the NECA is pretty good. It does generally capture the main contours and bumps and shapes of the face of this design. However, I still feel that the the particular quirks of the design are far better captured by the Monster Arts one here, even if they are ever so slightly off from some angles. Again, like the 
the very tip of his uh, of his snout here. They might have made it a bit thicker or more broad. That would have helped a bit. But the teeth are much better done on this guy, and I know when you're as distracting. I also think the ears might be a tiny bit too big on this guy. It's really hard to tell because uh, from different angles and stuff like that, uh, the 54 design does kind of shift and vary depending on which prop they were using to represent the head and stuff like that. Not, not to mention the sort of black and white <laughs> lighting and stuff in the film M makes it a bit hard to see, but they might be a touch too big. And it's also kind of really easy to make the head look really off by accentuating these articulation points behind it. However, they're easy to cover up just by actually pressing those joints together and making it look a lot more clean. Uh, and that actually does bring up another point uh, about the Monstrads figure. When it comes to articulation, this one is second to none. This is probably one of the best articulated figures from Monster Arts, surprisingly. Especially surprising because it is from such a version of Godzilla that is known to be very stiff moving compared to some other ones, say like the, uh, the Final Wars one or something like that. So you can see here, this guy's got a, a very, very well articulated tail. This is when Monster Arts really kind of nailed it. The ball joints in the tail are perfectly stiff, so they hold the pose really well. He can even stand on his two legs without leaning on the tail, and it's no problem depending on how you have him posed again. And it really holds its pose, and you can just do anything with this tail. It is so perfectly done. They really started to get their tails on the right track when they were doing, say, the Godzilla 2000 Millennium figure. Uh, that one had a really organic tail, but it was really loose. It would move seamlessly and look organic and beautiful, but then it would just flop down. This one, on the other hand, combines like the stiffness of the joints with just seamless articulation all through the tail, down to the very, very tip. So, beautifully done, and we see the same really good articulation all through the figure, through every limb. Despite this being a very chunky Godzilla, he can really do stuff with his, his legs here. And he's got a fair amount of movement through his body, and this neck is also very, very good. So you can do a lot of stuff with this guy. Same goes for, for his arms. Whereas the NECA figure, you know, it's pretty standard for a NECA figure, but it does have the same shortcomings that a lot of the NECA figures do, such as very stiff legs. They have a pretty good range of motion here, but this bit here is... Oh, you really can't do much of that. Really can't do much of the knee and at, at the ankle, it barely just wobbles, which is unfortunate. He does have one thing which I think is pretty cool with the NECA figures, where his hands do have articulated fingers. It is kind of stiff on this guy, and it doesn't really do all that much, but it is an articulation point that's kind of fun to have. And again, I will point out that I really hate the, the articulation in his mouth. It looks really bad in my mind, and unless he's facing dead on forwards, I always have it closed. But even then, his teeth look a little weird when it's closed, so it's kind of a win-lose situation, mainly focusing on lose, but nonetheless... Still functions pretty well. This guy's really cool because he is made of a nice solid, sort of slightly more rubberized plastic, so he feels really durable. And he does have fairly good articulation in the head here. Again, no one near as elegantly done as the Monster Arts, but definitely very functional and well done for a NECA figure. And then we have the tail, which I find rather disappointing. He has a few, like three segments here, and then the rubberized bit. The rubberized bit is both too small, the gap here is way too big between it, and it just kind of looks really messy and small and unprofessional. And it's also really not advised to actually bend the bendy wire part of the tail very much, because that you kind of risk damaging it in the long term. So, his tail does move, but it's just... It's not very impressive, especially compared to a tail as well done as this guy's here. All in all, I actually love both of these figures. Don't get me wrong, I know I've been kind of trashing the NECA one quite a bit in this review, but I really do actually love it. It does have a lot of personality, and it is really where the NECA Godzilla line actually started to turn around. This figure is the one where you could tell they actually put somebody competent on the sculpt work of this figure, because for the most part, sculpt's not bad. Sculpt is not bad at all, it, but it's just not 
more accurate to the suit used in the film than the monster arts and that's where my main criticism comes along in this video and it's not a criticism of the figure necessarily it's more a criticism of the people who are trying to trick themselves into thinking that this thing is anything more than it really is i have actually <laughs> In the past, I do remember that I kind of I confronted somebody about that, and they kind of admitted that they were just kind of trying to make themselves feel better about the figure because they couldn't afford the monster arts at the time. So I guess that might play a big part in it. I think if price wasn't really an issue with these figures, and you know, you know, we've all been there where we can clearly see that one figure is objectively not as good as the other, but we definitely can't afford the super expensive one then we like to kind of justify it to ourselves a little bit more. Maybe that's a stretch and just kind of... I don't know. But nonetheless, I do really love this figure. I think it is really good and a, a really good point in the NECA Godzilla line where they did start to take things more seriously. It was during the transitional phase, because I think after this we started getting like the GMK one, uh, which that sculpt was much more improved. He still had the the rubberized tail thing, which I think went away after that, but the spines on the GMK one is where they really started to improve it from there. The, the sculpt was much more chunky, much more accurate, still stylized, but generally uh, a lot more effort was put in than, say, the 84, where it was just trash, where, like, they couldn't even get the, the, ton the toenails to be the same proportions and all that weird stuff, and the... I don't know, that... <sighs> God, that figure was a mess, especially the first release of it. Um, all the really lazy detail work on the 94 figure and stuff like that. However, this Monster Arts figure, it, I think it's slightly underappreciated. It's basically Monster Arts at their basic level doing what they do. They've really refined the art of making these figures. It's sculpted by somebody who's extremely competent, knows what they're doing, and one of the best in the Godzilla sculpting industry. For sure, and it is just a beautiful representation of such a classic, classic design. It's not 100% perfect. I think there's, again, some minor little things that I would like tweaked with it. I'm really fussy again about uh, my 54 Godzilla designs, but for the most part, I think it is pretty much the best we could even hope for with a figure like this. And just before closing out this video, I'm just going to bring in a couple of other 54 uh, figures just so you can really compare them and I actually think all of these are actually more accurate to the suit than the NECA one Some more than others, but <laughs> I I really don't get it guys. I re this one's so obviously stylized. I Don't know. I don't know what's I don't know. Anyway uh, can Move these to the side uh, the first one here is this Bandai premium a nice big boy. This guy is way overpriced for what it is, I'd say. But I'm again, I was always on the lookout for better or the best 54 uh, Godzilla figures I could get my hands on. And when I saw the sculpt of this thing, I fell in love with it, and I knew I had to have it in my collection. As you can see, this one is much, much closer in terms of sculpt to the Monster Arts one here. The proportions are very, very similar. I think the only thing that's really different between these two figures is the spines. Uh, the spines on the Monster Arts, I, I'd say, are much better done. Except for kind of the angle of these two. I feel like these two should be brought together a little bit more. This gap here between them is a bit annoying. I feel like this spine here could have been brought slightly more center on. But... This guy has slightly smaller spines, I think, and they're slightly more rounded off because this guy is made of hard vinyl, so it's not made of the same sort of plastic as the Monster Arts one here, and typically they try and simplify the shapes a little bit for these kind of figures, round them off a little bit. The spines are a little bit smaller and a little bit less accurate, but the rest of the sculpt on this thing is almost dead spot on to what he looked like in the film. Even the nature of the wrinkles in the suit, again, far closer to what we see on the monster arts than these really accentuated ones we see on the NECA. And overall, very, very tastefully done figure. Uh, even down to the teeth in the mouth, despite them being made in the same way as a Bandai vinyl where they have that like chunk of plastic behind them and they're just painted, it's still done really effectively on this thing. And overall, it's just a really accurate version of this Godzilla. Now, I'm going to bring in the other Bandai vinyl I have of 
this version of Godzilla. This one is really a lot less accurate, but even though it, it's a much more of a toy-like figure, a lot less accurate, now you can actually get a nice image of what the real, real Godzilla looks like from the film. You can see the face on him. Matches the the uh, monster arts figure quite a lot more than the NECA one, at least in my my humble opinion. But uh, even though this is much more of a toy-like figure, you know, it's a Bandai vinyl. They didn't bother painting the nails on them here. The spines are really uh, crap, to be honest. I don't know why the spines are really small and crap. Well, I do know why. They they needed to mold them in one piece. So they really had to simplify them and they made them smaller and it's just had a big downside to this figure. But aside from that, the overall proportions and shape of the rest of the body and just that sort of general pose that this guy's in is a lot more accurate to the film. This version of Godzilla had a very, very stiff general pose when he was just sort of standing and walking through the street. It was very much... I think this guy captures it really well. Just a very, very angular, steady pose that you, you're likely to see with this guy. And the proportions are very much in tune with that as well in this figure. This guy does have some more of that accentuated wrinkling down the body as well. So, yeah. The thing is, the 54 suit no longer exists. We only have film itself, as well as just some behind-the-scenes photos of the suit. And we have replicas of it. Uh, I believe uh, if you've watched the Boss Coffee ads with uh, the Godzilla <laughs> scenes in them, that uses a replica suit of the original. Because, you know, it was made of like a concrete rubber kind of mixture and that, that have degraded over time and crumbled into nothing, unfortunately. Like a lot of old movie props, unfortunately. So we really have to depend on artists to bring this sculpt back to life. No matter how hard they try, there's always going to be little inaccuracies, little differences. And, you know, to a collector like me, that's actually kind of a cool thing, because then you get a lot of variety in terms of the figures, and you kind of have an excuse to buy more than one, because if you get one that's already perfect, you kind of don't need another one, I guess. And, you know, maybe there is some utility in that, but it does make collecting a bit more fun. It does always make the search ever continue to get that perfect 54 figure. And like I said, I think the Yuji Sakai Modeling Collection 30cm Scale X Plus figure is the most accurate one that I've seen. At least in the photos I've seen of it, it looks spot on in every every stretch of the imagination. At least from what I can tell. Again, if you guys can help hook me up with one of those, that'd be much appreciated. But for now, <clears throat> that is it for this video. I actually still strongly recommend both of these figures. Uh, I do really love the NECA for what it is. I am a huge fan of, you know, stylized figures and ones that do things differently in their own way. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with admitting that the NECA figure isn't as accurate as some people make it out to be. But nonetheless, that is it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you in one of my future ones. But until then, may all your vinyl be irradiated vinyl. Over and out. Bye.